Hello, I'm Davey Holmes, and with me is Neil Forsyth. Uh, today we're going to be talking about work. Um, and so our equation for work, uh, in general physics terms, would be work equals force uh, times the displacement, right? So then as we look at uh, functions and moving along functions, we have to start taking the integral for many different um, little uh, changes in uh, uh, displacement. So now work becomes the integral over the curve of the force vector uh, dotted with the dr, which is the change in displacement. Uh, this is going to be equal to uh, so the curve, um, and then we're going to take f is equal to two parts, um, m and n, and we're going to dot this with dr, and dr in this case is going to be dx and dy. Okay. Okay. So now we can just do the the simple dot product. So that's going to be m dx. So that's our general formula for how we're going to find the work using integrals over a curve. Um, so if we take a step back and examine what exactly work is, let's draw a picture of a building. You start with a ball on the top of the building. At this position, when you're holding it out there, the potential energy is greater than zero because the force of gravity will make it fall and things like that. So we're going to say potential energy, we'll just let it equal some number C, all right? So then you let it go. Now the ball falls all the way, all the way to the ground, right? And at this point, the potential energy, technically it's zero. So let's just say potential energy equals zero. Now, the work here is the change in potential energy, right? It's how the ball went from here with a potential energy of C. That C got converted into kinetic energy when the ball was in motion. And it... Okay, as Davey just depicted, um, we can calculate work just using uh, potential energy. And the interesting thing about potential energy is that it is a conservative function. And basically what that means is what only what uh, determines your work is solely the endpoints of your function. So say for instance, in this example that Davey just had, if say for instance, um, our ball that we dropped moved in a sort of helical fashion like this, the work done by gravity would still be equal to negative C. Because all that matters is the endpoints, and this is what the definition of a conservative function is. So, how do we know that something's conservative? Great question. So basically, if you can take the second derivative of your function, and it's uh, symmetric, um, you know that you have a conservative function. So say, for instance, we take our, our potential elements, A, B, D, C, all arbitrary numbers. But as you see, this second derivative is symmetric about, about this uh, AC line. So, since that gives us a quick, easy test to see if this function is um, conservative. And if it's conservative, all we really have to do is worry about our antiderivative. So, if it's a conservative function, really all that matters is f of b minus f of a. And then that allows us to quite easily calculate our work done. And if Say, for instance, the function isn't conservative, which most functions are conservative. It's a little bit more complicated, but we'll just, I'll just give a quick overview on that. So basically, what you would have to do in that case is you would have to parameterize your function. Um, your parameters of your function, r of t, r of t. And then once you have a parameterization, say, x, once you're, uh, once you're parameterized in that, then basically what you would have to do is take dr dt 
of this, of your parameterization, and then that would be this part of the, uh, this, that would be this second part of your formula for work. And then in order to get your force, you would plug RT into F of T. So you would end up with a function of F of R of T dotted with DF. Yep. Okay, so as I was saying, um, once you, uh, you parameterize your function, you take the derivative of your parameterization, which would be dr, um, or excuse me, dx, dy. It gives us everything necessary to plug it into our formula. So first, for our function, our force field, we use f of r of t. And then we can just dot that with our derivative of our parameterized function, which would be dx dy. And then, of course, we take the integral of that, and that would be able, and this is how we would be able to calculate work done by a non-conservative function. But as I said before, most of the most of the things we'll be dealing with when we in regards to work are with conservative field, uh, are with conservative uh, functions, um, and uh, since because of that, all we have to really worry about for the most part are our endpoints f of b minus f of a, and. That's our summary of work.